Hi friends, welcome back. If you don't know me, my name is Monica and I make content about working 9 to 5, owning a small business, productivity, lifestyle, sustainability, and wedding planning. Today I'm going to show you all how I made my DIY sustainable bridesmaid proposal boxes. Everything in this box is one way or another sustainable and it's all DIY, all very affordable and doable within one week. I gave these to my bridesmaids a few days ago and they loved them. So I'm going to go through each DIY and give you a little tutorial on how I made everything. I made everything very personalized to each bridesmaid. So some of the scents are different for the fragrances that I use, some of the patterns for the fabric are different, even the flowers are different. So I definitely encourage you to make your bridesmaid proposal boxes personalized as well. It adds that little flair of uniqueness and also lets your bridesmaids know that you cared and thought a little bit more about their own personality and how they stand out against each other. So definitely free feel to alter these DIYs in ways that best fit your bridesmaids, but I'm just gonna go ahead and show you how I made mine. Let's start with the box itself that I use. I decided not to go with a single use gift box because I'm not too much of a single-use kind of girl. I really like to reuse things when I can and I thought this crate looked so cute. I use them all around my crafting room as you guys probably know but I also thought it could be a good storage unit for really anyone not just for a crafting room. I got these off of hay.com. I'll put a link below of all the products that I'm talking about so that you can go and purchase them um, if you're interested but these adorable they come apart so you just pull and they fold up really nicely if you want to package them up and not use them and then they assemble very easily love it this is a medium size they also have a small size which i have a few of this is an example of a small size it's in blue they also have a bunch of different colors if you're not into white but yeah i wanted to give everyone something that they can keep for a while and reuse because i feel like the whole bridal process is very wasteful and i don't want the girls to receive something and be like okay now what do i do with it so to fill the box i put a whole bunch of really cute diys that in my opinion are very functional useful and cute let's start off with this pouch I love it. I've been seeing these everywhere on Pinterest and I needed to make one for myself and I thought all my bridesmaids really love this too. It's a cute little makeup pouch but could really store anything. This is actually the hardest DIY in the entire box and I thought we'd start off with the most difficult thing first. You'll need a few materials. The first thing is fabric. I got some really cute fabric from spoonflower.com. These are all different types of prints that artist made and Spoonflower prints the art onto cotton fabric and they're so cute. I grabbed one type of pattern for each of my bridesmaids. To make this pouch you'll need two 14 by 11 inch pieces of the main outer fabric and you'll also need fusible batting to go on the back of both of these pieces so cut out the same size of those and you'll also need two pieces of the same sized lining fabrics. I went with this satin yellow for some contrast. You'll also need a two inch by seven inch piece of that main fabric. You're gonna fold in the ends to meet in the middle and then fold that whole thing over in half again and press that. These will be the pull tabs. You'll also need a 14 inch zipper to match the outer fabric and also you'll need some thread that matches and of course you'll need a sewing machine so to get started we're going to place the outer fabric right side facing up the zipper right side facing down and the lining right side facing down and you want to stitch that on the long end next we're going to take the other main fabric right side facing up that whole sandwiched thing we just sewed we're going to open it up so the zipper is out we're going to put the zipper right side facing down again and take the other lining right side facing down and so on that line right there as well. I use pins just to keep this cleaner, so I definitely recommend that. We're going to top stitch the top of the zipper so that everything just looks clean. This is kind of an unnecessary step, but makes the whole thing seem cleaner. Next, we're going to put the two main fabrics together and sew on that line. And then we're going to put the lining fabrics together and sew on that line as well. But with the lining, we're going to leave a hole in the middle. So I'm going to sew up until like halfway. I'm going to stop and then go to the other end and sew, leaving about a four inch gap. This is how we're going to turn the pouch right side out eventually. So then we're going to put this middle seam in the middle <laughs> and line it up with the zipper. 
we're gonna take our pull tab that we pressed and we're going to sew two lines on it so that it is secure then we're going to cut in half because we want two pull tabs one on each side of the zipper so i'm just cutting it with fabric scissors and we're going to fold the pull tab over place the folded part on the inside of the pouch with the raw edge um, kind of facing out and we're going to sew along that line make sure the zipper is open um, so you don't get the zipper stuck so basically we're sewing four lines two on each of the ends of the main fabric two on each of the ends of the lining fabric the pull tabs are attached to the main fabric and the lining doesn't have anything attached to it um, but it does get kind of tricky when you're sewing the lining because you want to try to avoid the main fabric that's on top um, but you'll manage just go slow this is probably the hardest part and then you have something that looks like this you're going to want to cut out two inch by two inch size squares on each corner of both the main fabric and the lining fabric so that's going to be eight squares that you end up cutting out and this is just to make the poofiness of the pouch next we're going to take that corner of that opening and we're going to pull it so that the edges align it's kind of hard to describe but then we're going to sew along that line which creates like the 3d effect of the pouch last step is to find that opening in the lining again and pull the entire pouch right side out this part was kind of difficult for me so remember to leave at least a four or five inch gap in that lining fabric so you have enough space to turn this right side out and remember to stitch the lining closed when you're done and once you're done with all that you have a cute box i am going to be adding this to my website i'm going to alter the pattern a little bit because i don't want to take this straight from that other person's blog i'm going to alter the shape of it slightly i'm also going to make it quilted because i think the quilted look looks really cool putting that aside this is the bridesmaid toiletries bag or makeup bag and I think it's really cute. This portion of the video is in partnership with Makesy, which is one of my favorite brands. As a small business owner, I love reliable, high quality, sustainable aesthetic suppliers, and Makesy is all of that and more. I've been getting a lot of my candle supplies from them for the longest time, all of my candle vessels, some of my candle wax, all my wicks, the lids, a lot of my fragrances, they're all from Makesy, and I wanted to kind of explore a lot of the other materials that they offer because they offer so many different products when you go on their website they have so many different categories of body care skin care lip care fragrances essential oils different types of packaging different types of waxes and balms alcohols their shipping is fast and reliable and you know the quality of their stuff is always going to be a plus so for my bridesmaids diys i knew i wanted to use some makesy products because of how high quality they are and because everything is sourced ethically and sustainably so i had this really fun idea of making two different things a little cute candle which is it's so adorable and a day of scent i have never made a perfume before so this was kind of fun to experiment with and i've made a bunch of candles which you all know but i'm going to go through how i made both of these starting off with these perfumes the first thing you'll need is one of these beautiful jars this is from Makesy, and i would never gotten any materials to make a perfume before from them. And this is like the cutest bottle. It looks so luxurious. You will also need perfumer's alcohol. I got an 8.34 pound container full of it because I do plan on making this for my small business. But if you don't want to get this big of a size, there are trial sizes. And that's the great thing about Makesy. You can get wholesale sizes or smaller sizes. Another thing you'll need for this DIY are fragrances to make your perfume smell yummy. So I got these. This is a 16 ounce size. It's called Musky Amber and Dusky Rose. I actually have candles that smell just like this and that's why I picked this up because it smells amazing. And then I got these two trial sizes, Juniper Fur and Blossom Spruce. This is for my sister Jessica and Natural Neroli Nectar and Peach Musk for my friend Roma. And because I'm extra, I wanted to make these perfumes really luxurious. I also picked up from Makesy Jasmine Flowers and Little Rose Buds. And they look so cute. So I just added these to the different perfumes that I made. I also have some spare lavender buds from Makesy from 
a long time ago. So I added those to one of the perfumes. Mixi also has a section on their website where they have blogs and videos of tutorials to help you make your DIYs. So I actually followed a tutorial on Mixi to make this perfume. So in addition to my Mixi products, you also need a scale, beakers, and something to stir with to make perfumes. To make a perfume, you want 20 to 30% fragrance oil and 70 to 80% perfumer's alcohol. The capacity of these Aspen bottles that I have are 50 milliliters, so I'm measuring out 35 milliliters of the perfumer's alcohol and 15 milliliters of the fragrance oil of my choice. And honestly, this is such an easy DIY because all you have to do now is mix the two ingredients together. And that's it. I used this funnel to put the mixture into the bottle because the opening was a little bit small and I also wanted to make my perfumes look a little extra special so I put in these dried florals from Mixi. I did roses for one of them, I did lavender buds for another, and the jasmine flowers for the last one. And they all ended up smelling so good. Also, I made cute little labels for these perfumes. I made these on Adobe Illustrator really quick just like typed up whatever came to mind <laughs> and this is for my sister jessica she's one of my maids of honor and i just put smells like maid of honor jessica and then the different notes of the perfume so this says juniper spruce and musk and i just put the number one at the top because i don't know i felt like that was something I should do. Printed out all the designs on sticker paper, used my Cricut to cut it out, and my Cricut literally just cut rectangles around the different labels, so I could have totally done it myself. If you don't have a Cricut, you can totally do this on your own with some sticker paper, and I put them on my perfumes. I feel like this is a very unique DIY. I haven't seen them too much in bridesmaid proposal boxes, so definitely recommend, and it was very affordable. Moving on to the next DIY, these cute candles. These are 2.5 ounce candles. I use 100% soy wax and I make candles all the time, but let me give you a little tutorial on these. From Mixi, I got these 2.5 ounce vessels. These are called the Aura Vessels. They come in a bunch of different sizes, 8 ounce, 12 ounce, these are 2.5 ounces, and they have a bunch of other vessels that aren't ceramic. They have tin ones as well, but I really like the look of these and I think they're simple. So I went with these. I also got a bunch of wicks. These are the wicks I use. These are the Crackling Booster Wick 0.04 wicks. <laughs> I went with the same couple fragrances. These are very versatile fragrances, so you can use them for a whole bunch of different DIYs. So I'm reusing them and just matching up the scents that I had already used for the girls um, with their perfumes. To make candles, you're going to need something to warm up your wax. I have a wax warmer here, but you can use a double boiler and a Pyrex or you can use the microwave and a Pyrex, whatever works for you. I'm using 100% soy wax. Makesy has a bunch of options, so use whatever you think is best. You're going to need your fragrances and wicks, like I mentioned before. You're going to need a scale and a thermometer. Also, along with your wicks, you will need wick clips. These aren't necessary, but they really help with keeping the wick stable inside of the vessel while your wax cools down. So I'm putting a sticker on the end of the wick clip, and I'm just going to insert it at the bottom of this candle vessel, and then it'll stand up on its own. For candles, you want to work with a ratio of 90% wax to 10% fragrance oil. So I'm making two candles of each fragrance. Each candle is 2.5 ounces, so it'll be 5 ounces altogether. Therefore, for each fragrance, I'm going to pour out 0.5 ounces and the rest will be filled with wax which is 4.5 ounces. I'm going to wait until the wax hits 185 degrees Fahrenheit and then I can add my fragrance in and mix for a few minutes. Then I'm going to wait until the wax cools down until around 130 Fahrenheit and that's my pouring temperature. You don't have to be super specific about the temperatures if this is your first time making candles, but I'm a perfectionist and those are the temperatures that work for me. Wait overnight for your candles to cool and in the morning they should be done. Oh, I love this. Once again, I made this label on Adobe Illustrator. I just typed it up and organized it in a way where I thought it looks good on a label and I measured what kind of size I want it to be. Printed a bunch of these out on a piece of sticker paper use my Cricut to cut it out. Again, I could have cut it out myself, but it's a little bit cleaner with the Cricut. It's so cute. It smells amazing. Ugh. 
it's so good. I love how personalized this is. You can definitely get generic candles on Etsy um, and places like that, but I love that my bridesmaids know that I hand poured this for them in a scent that I picked out for them that matches the perfume that I made them. So that's definitely the benefit of DIYing your bridesmaid proposal boxes and the things in it. So I had an amazing time making these two DIYs. Thank you to Makesy for supplying me with the materials to make these and to surprise my friends. They love them. I'm definitely going to be adding these two DIYs to my online shop. I might even add these labels to my Etsy shop. Let me know if you'd be interested in these and I will add them. Moving on to the next DIY. We all know it wouldn't be a gift for me if I didn't include a scrunchie. This is one of my basic scrunchies that I always make for my small business, but I added a cute little thing at the top. I haven't told your hair back. How cute. So let me show you how I make these scrunchies. For some added sustainability, I'm going to be making these scrunchies out of scrap fabric from my engagement party dress. So this is just some satin fabric and I'm cutting out strips of 24 by six inches. I'm using the burrito method. So I'm going to fold the fabric right sides together the long way. So the six inch sides are matching up and so a straight line there. Then I'm going to do this burrito method where I fold in the fabric to make a burrito type thing. There are going to be two pieces of fabric on the outer layer and then two on the inner layer and you want to just sew the outer layer together. All of this is with the fabric right sides together um, and then as you get to the bottom of this tube you're going to pull the inner layer out so you have more fabric to sew together. By the end of this burrito or tube leave a one inch or two inch opening at the bottom so you could pull out the fabric to be right sides out then you'll just have this tube with a little hole in it to insert your elastic so take your elastic use a safety pin and use a safety pin method to pull the elastic all the way through the entire tube i attach my safety pin to this loop turner just to make the process a little faster um, so you just want to find that hole insert the safety pin and bring the elastic all the way through until it's all scrunched up. The size of the elastic depends on how tight you want your scrunchie. So I always just try it on and see exactly where I want the elastic to lay. Usually ends up being, I think around seven inches. I honestly don't really measure too much, <laughs> but I also have this brand tag. So I'm going to sew this brand tag into where that last hole is that we need to close up to finish off the scrunchie. If you don't have a tag, you don't need to put a tag in, but in the end it looks like this. And when you're done, you have one of these. Again, I made this design on Adobe Illustrator. I put four or five of them, I think four of them, on one sheet of paper. And I just cut them out to be the size that I wanted them to. Use the little stapler to keep it together. That was that. In the end, I put all the DIYs in the pouch. I think it looks absolutely adorable. Like, look how cute. Oh my gosh, I can't. I can't. And then the last DIY. Of course, we cannot forget a card. To make this a little bit more personalized, I made these very basic cards that are completely inspired off of my Pinterest board. And on the inside, I actually put on the left side, um, just like roles and responsibilities and expectations for my bridesmaids, like expected dates where I think like I might have some sort of bridal activity, what the plan is for lodging the night before, what they might wear and things like that. And then on the right side, I wrote a little handwritten note to each of them, just like saying something sweet and officially asking them <laughs> to be my bridesmaid and just like cute stuff like that. So made this also on adobe illustrator but this totally could have been done on microsoft word if i wanted to these are the final addition to the bridesmaid proposal boxes at this point the flowers are a little bit dead because this is a couple days later but i went to acne and i just bought some flowers because i thought it'd be cute to give flowers i think receiving flowers is always really nice so i wanted them to feel special got them some flowers these are mason jars i've had forever so i'm reusing them um, or repurposing them from previous things that I originally had them for and I'm giving them away to my friends and in the end we have this beautiful box and I love it and without further ado let me show you guys me surprising my bridesmaids with their bridesmaid proposal boxes I think all the boxes came out so well but at the end of the day I'm just happy that Jessica, Emily, Steph, and Roma all said yes and I'm so excited to have them
dining room, I assume. Yeah. Is that for me? <laughs> <laughs> you completely missed the slide. Okay. <laughs> That's cool. Hey! Yeah. yeah! Okay, cool. I was like, oh, she's crafting things. That's yeah. cool. No, I quickly ran to Akron this morning to get these because oh. they look like a little too empty. So pretty! My box is like a It's okay. <laughs> Basically, I wanted to keep the proposal boxes simple, but also really thoughtful. I think the most important part of bridesmaid proposals is to ask your friends and family to be up there with you on your wedding day, but it's always fun to receive a little something just to show your appreciation for your bridesmaids. And honestly, I love DIYing. I know a lot of other people like crafting, so making this box was honestly so much fun and i would so want to make all these things even if i wasn't giving them away as gifts if you have any questions about how i made anything or if i didn't explain anything clearly please let me know in the comments i will definitely interact with you all down there if you want to go check out makesy which you all definitely should because they are my favorite supplier i will leave them down below as well in addition to all of my favorite products i will have the product links down below thank you for watching and i will see you in the next one bye